Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and listen. What's up, babies? Welcome back to the Draft Alps. This is Mount Draftmore. You know what it is. I'm Ben Jammin, and today I'm joined by the regulars from the central west end of St. Louis in the shadow of the Cahokia Mounds. We got the people's champion, Dylan. Ah! He's, he's losing his mind. And back again from the snowy peaks of Snoqualmie, where the cold freeze meets the ocean breeze. It's Mr. Franchise himself, Matt. Hello there. Today we're drafting Star Wars movie moments. And a special thanks to our sponsors today, Darth's Death Sticks and the Mitabetus Meter. Let's roll the dice, because that's all we got to start. Uh, who has the dice? Oh, nice. You've got the dice. Got there the you dice. go. Matt's got, got it. The dice. Matt's on it. Let's He's see. shaking. Let's see. He's waiting for the dice music. Oh, Ooh, my God. 28. A lauded 28. Are you kidding Ow. me? All right, here we go. Oh, Bessie. What did it say? 29? What? Get out of oh, here. Come on. Get a, come on, Ben. Roll a 30. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. It's a hot die. Hot die. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Come on, 30. Come on, 30. It's a 7, dude. Dang it. Back in the wraparound. Dylan really got a 29. Fuck yeah. I know. I, I, I thought it was sim pretty. 28. I got a 29, baby. Okay, let me ask you guys really quick before we start. Is there a McDonald's pick? Because I can't decide. I don't know. Culture might say there is. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think the, the popular consensus would say there is one. You think so? There is a McDonald's pick. Oh, man. I mean, I'm not. I have Round a feeling one. what you, you popular culture might say is the McDonald's pick, but I don't think I want to pick it. Because I've talked about it before at length, and I just, like, someone else can pick it. I'm done. Like, I want to go with something different that I haven't talked about. Yeah, but do you think it's the number one? I That's the thing. Like, you may not want to talk about it, but if you think it's the number one, then you kind of got to pick it. Man, I like, don't... And, and it's the you, McDonald's dilemma. And if you know about it... Exactly. The McDonald's dilemma. Well, let me look over my little list here. Think of all see. the moments. It, it's, it's, almost okay. like, it's almost like if you got to pick Lincoln... If you're first pick and you pick Lincoln, you got to wait for all the other Republican presidents to come back around. Are you going to have, like, is he going to be able to carry your squad? Now, you only got a three man oh, draft here. Oh, my God, you're right. I've got to think about, dude, there's some things that aren't going to make it back to me. There's one, two, three, four things that aren't going to make it back to me. Nope. So I, I almost need to pick, like, I don't want to pick that. I don't. But you might have to. I think I can pick something that maybe y'all won't pick. So I'll, I'll hold on on I'll hold out on that. So I'm going to go with something I think might be lost in the next four picks. I'm going to go with, this is an iconic moment in Star Wars. Okay. This is definitely a, a first round pick for sure. Maybe not the McDonald's, but it's first round. And it's when Han and Leia, Han's being frozen in carbonite. And Leia goes, I love you. And he goes, I know. He doesn't say, I love you too. He just says, I know. In the script, I think he was supposed to say it. And, you know, then Harrison Ford being Harrison Ford. He ad-libbed that, yeah. Ad-libbed it, right? He was like, this is going to sound better, George. Well, and I love the uh, the reason why they froze Han and Carbonite in Empire is that, like, by that time... Raiders of the Lost Ark would, had already blown up, and there wasn't necessarily a guarantee that they'd be able to get Harrison Ford back to for the third movie. Whoa! So this was like they're kind of George Lucas covering his ass a little bit, being like, "I might not be able to have Han Solo in the next movie, so let's have this nice like plot device where we can freeze him in carbonite, and obviously in Return of the Jedi he gets unfrozen, so it worked out. But this was kind of like a get out jail free card in case he did not come back because Indiana Jones was blown up at the time." Dude, and him getting frozen in the carbonite is iconic, too. Oh, yeah. Like, that's... I think I had a toy, maybe. I am I have a vague memory. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the, what's funny about him and the carbonite is it really doesn't look like him. No, no. It looks like some dude with big, juicy lips that isn't Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, like, trying to grab some titties. Yeah. <laughs> dude, so that's a pretty iconic moment in and of itself. Um... Oof, oof, 
Ah, I feel good having grabbed that. I feel comfortable now. Well, and it's just so like, I don't know. It's so on brand for Han to be the scoundrel that he is to like, you've got this woman professing her love for you and you're, there's no guarantee you're going to get out of this live. And he's just like, I'm still the cool guy. He I is. know. Well, especially when he's the one that's been basically begging for sex the whole time. Like he's been hounding her. He's basically like grabbed onto her ankle, you know, with a full heart on yep. the whole time they've, they've known each other and him being like what like 34 something like that and her being 19 some power dynamics there yeah but that is an iconic star wars movie moment yes uh, one that had to go i agree oh yeah one so, number behind him yeah you know see i have no i'm un, unashamed in taking the mcdonald's pick because it has to be taken because it's synonymous with star wars every little kid that grew up with a oscillating fan said this line <laughs> and it will be continued to be said for all of time, which is Luke. I am your father. That fateful duel in cloud city between Vader and Luke, where the truth is revealed after he slices Luke's hand off, <laughs> which is kind of twisted when you really think about it. Like your dad just cut your hand off. There's something about the Skywalkers. They, they, they lose hands. <laughs> Everybody in Star Wars loses some kind of appendage at some point in time. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that is, that's the most iconic moment. It, it's the one that's synonymous with Star Wars that was remembered forever. Like, that is the moment. And no problem with it going in the first round. It should go in the first round. It's an iconic moment. I'm glad you got that. It is certainly iconic. Um, and then Luke's response, No! That's impossible. It's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Obi-Wan said you killed him. Having watched the TV show Obi-Wan recently, do you think... There's more context to that now. Do you think Darth Vader was smiling behind the mask while he said it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Well, and Obi-Wan... Obi-Wan like, never told you. <laughs> Obi-Wan in that series gets vindicated for, like, Luke... Basically saying, like, what do you mean from a certain point of view? Because, like, I don't know. And now Obi-Wan's like, well, he said it, not me. I'm just parlaying what he said, mm -hmm. which is Anakin and Vader are two different people. Yeah. So. It, uh, it makes Obi-Wan a little bit more of a reliable narrator now. Because there is a moment in the Clone Wars where Satine is like, meet Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, a man, uh, what, what did she say? Like, uncomfortable or... Uh, a man familiar with stretching the truth or something like that. <laughs> Old Obi-Wan. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah, it's a good pick. It's a good pick. Yeah. Had to be done. That means I get the fun picks. Ooh. The I'm Your Father is pretty important, but what made the first Star Wars, like, the first Star Wars, wasn't Luke... Like, using the Force against the little robot. It wasn't Darth Vader and Obi-Wan fighting and Obi-Wan disappearing. The worst lightsaber fight of all time. It wasn't the garbage compactor scene or any... Like, all of that added. It was all about that attack run. The trench the run. Oh, Star. yeah. It's all about the trench run. Use the Force, Luke. Luke, you've turned off your targeting computer. Is everything okay? Pew, pew. <laughs> like, that was original. It all felt original. Yep. Everything after that, it gets replayed. You, you get to Return of the Jedi, okay, it gets replayed. You get to Episode 7, it gets replayed. It, But that first time, that first trench run with Luke, oh, man. And Special, his, yeah. his comrades are behind him, slowly getting shot down. Darth Vader's right behind him. Dee -dee 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 -dee. The falls are strong with this one. And then you just hear, yeah! Out of nowhere, the Millennium Falcon... Comes in, Han Solo totally redeems himself. Yep. yep. He went from a douche to the hero. Oh, awesome. my God. Han Solo knocked Darth Vader out. He got him he, out of the fight. That's impressive in itself. Yeah. Darth Vader couldn't sense it. Red he five, just man. Flipping into the into whoa, space. Whoa, whoa, he looks whoa, like whoa. A, a goofy motherfucker. Right. Doesn't look like a Sith Lord, no. Sith Master. Not one who's supposedly the best pilot in the galaxy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he got dunked on by a kid. Yeah. <laughs> from the desert. Yeah. <laughs> Some teenagers took his ass out. Wow. But, yep. 
damn good scene, damn good moment. It's it and like it holds up so well. Like it the like the effects that they use, it just it, it looks good. Yeah. It looks good all these years later. I mean that's I mean, that movie comes out in seventy seven, so that's what forty five years old now. Well, some people would want a uh remake. Uh, a, a total reboot of Star Wars. I'm not going to name them by name, but uh, some people in this room, in fact, maybe at a mat <laughs> sitting across from us might want a Star Wars reboot. What? This is crazy. <laughs> I don't know who Blast you're talking about. Me. Yeah. That's going to do it for the first round. Uh, special thanks to sponsor today, Death's Darth Sticks. You're listening to Mount Draftmore. Mount Draftmore. Hey, traveler. You look worn out. Would you like to buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. Are you sure? This is the finest spice grown in the lava fields of Mustafa and wrapped in leaves straight from Kashyyyk. No, you want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. While I'm doing that, I'll smoke the Empire's choicest Darth's death sticks in cantinas and apothecaries near you. So uncivilized. Now, draft more. It's round two, and I'm in the wraparound. Ooh. So, you know, I get to pick the pick that I really want. The pick that I think is most important to the Star Wars lore. Like, what's happening in the universe? Ooh. Why, what, what sends Anakin Skywalker down this path oh. where he's going to fail? Where Luke has to be the one to help redeem, even though I don't believe that Darth Vader redeems himself. Like, redemption doesn't happen with a single act. That's a different conversation for a different podcast. But anyways, all of this... Doesn't happen without the Duel of Fates. I knew it. It is yep. literally called the Duel of Fates for a reason. This is the fate of Anakin Skywalker, the fate of his soul, whether he's going to be on the light side or the dark side. Anakin doesn't have a father. Qui-Gon is his potential father figure. And Qui-Gon dying leads to him being trained by Obi-Wan, who isn't a father. He doesn't even want him. He doesn't want to go to Tatooine. He doesn't want to pick up this desert, like, plebeian, right? He just wants to leave him. He, he's not valuable. So uncivilized. So uncivilized. He's got no purpose, but Qui-Gon sees the value in Anakin. But then Qui-Gon dies. Yep. And, and Obi-Wan has to take on Anakin as, as that dying wish from Qui-Gon. A reluctant mentor. Yeah, so, yeah. Th so you know there's resentment on Obi-Wan's part. And that just feeds that darkness inside Anakin. Anakin doesn't get the father figure he wants. He gets a brother, which brothers are cool, yeah. but a brother can't raise another brother. Mm -mm. Not in the Force. No, mm -mm. and, and Qui-Gon was, you know, effectively like a gray Jedi where he didn't, he didn't sit on the council because he didn't agree with everything that the council and the Jedi Order like subscribed to. And this is why, if he was alive, Anakin would have been fine because Qui-Gon would have been like, it's okay if you love somebody, like... You should have attachment. Like, that's, it's kind of, a, like, stupid in its own right to th say that you have to devote yourself to an order and completely devoid your life of any kind of emotional attachments because that doesn't make sense. As, like, a human being that exists, you can't just cut yourself off from love and affection. It doesn't make any sense. So, without him in the picture, he's going along with what Obi-Wan's saying. And Obi-Wan is much more of, like, the, at least when he's young, he subscribes to the whole, like, yes, this is the Jedi Order. It's black and white. It is very much good, bad. You have to follow this set of rules. You got to live this way. Qui-Gon was not like that. Therefore, Anakin's not the guy that follows into that whole black and white category. Man, it's like, I don't know if y'all watch Naruto or Naruto Shippuden, but, yeah, it's kind of, if he had had Qui-Gon, he would have been like Naruto being trained by Jirai. He would have had all of this, like, natural, what because it's like the living force. Yeah. He would have been all about the living force like Qui-Gon. Yeah. He would have been probably more powerful. Well, and that's what you see like Obi-Wan at the in the original trilogy has come around to all that. Yeah. But it took him to get rock bottom with Anakin to even start to get to the point where he could start thinking beyond like the dogma of the Jedi. 
Nicely put. Yep. None of it happens. None of the Star Wars happen without that quiet. I mean, Qui Gon getting killed. That's that score. My God, it's the best one. Dun, dun, so dun, good. Dun, dun, wait, what? what yeah, that's it. Dun, 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 dun. Da, and then the, da, da, da. there's a lot of tension as well with the uh, force fields. Oh, and when they flip on and off, mm -hmm. yeah. It's yep. the first time you see a dual-sided lightsaber. Darth Maul looking he, bad Dude, ass. it looks so cool. It does. Taking on two guys at once. And then after Qui-Gon gets stabbed, like, the emotion from Ewan McGregor as he plays. <gasps> over, like, he's hit, like, those fucking swipes. He just looks like he's really coming he's, he's for He's going him. with like, the rage, doo, yeah. Doo, doo. Cuts that shit in half. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So, so great. I'm, You know, part of me <laughs> wishes Darth Maul had a bigger role to play, but... His role actually was pretty big, and there was enough ambiguity to build up his character into what it is today. Yeah. So that's kind of cool, too. It was actually a good choice to leave Darth Maul as this, like, mysterious figure that's just going to fuck everything up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That, that was another one that had to go. Had to go. Had to go. All right. Back on to me. Second pick. <clears throat> Similar to the Duel of Fate setting up Anakin's future, another gigantic deciding point that puts us in a position of even seeing Darth Vader as he is, is the duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin on Mustafar. Episode 3, by far, like, this is the gold standard of, like, a lightsaber duel. Like, it, it's the best one, hands down. Like, the, the amount of raw tension and emotion that's happening between these men. I mean, you have Obi-Wan who's saying, like, what what the hell are you doing? Like, this you, you swore to destroy them not to join them and then anakin just fully embracing the whole paranoia and just i you are not with me so therefore you are my enemy and then just like the the like the choreography is amazing the backdrop of like the lava fields and musafar is amazing the score is amazing um and then just the conclusion of just like anakin loses out to obi-wan the whole cheesy high ground thing but at the same time that that final little bit of like i loved you and like, how could you do this? And then Anakin just fully on Vader at that point. He's just, I hate you. And then, you are my brother, you are Anakin. You my brother, Anakin. You were supposed to bring balance to the Force, not destroy it. And then the whole, like, the little Easter egg of, like, nice. Obi-Wan grabbing the lightsaber because that sets up a new hope. And then just you see the end result of Anakin is a maimed, like, crispy critter that has to be put inside this life-preserving suit. And he is fully Darth Vader at that point in time. This is like an emotionally charged scene that is crucial to setting up what will become in the uh, the original trilogy. So, and I always wondered why Obi Wan left Anakin to die there, but in the book, apparently for Episode Nine, Obi Wan sensed the presence of Darth Plagueis, or not Darth Plagueis, uh, Darth Sidious, Sidious um, coming. And so he's like, oh, fuck, I got to get out of here. I got to scoot out of here. Dude, it could have just been like, swipe. I know. He could have just pu he's already force down, pushed like, him into the lava. Boom. Okay, <laughs> bye. Yeah. Would have been easy. Yeah. I mean, fucking drop a rock on his head. But then, had he killed Anakin, ooh, man, then there there might not be, um, a, I mean, Darth Vader, while not redeemed by one act, and that's another conversation, is key to overthrowing the Empire and saving Luke. At well, the end. well, and I just don't think I don't think Obi Wan could kill him. Like I don't think he had it in him to like be the one that delivers the final blow or act or whatever that might be. Because still, like Anakin is in his mind, even after all that, like there's still a piece of like his memory that. Anakin is tied to that he cannot destroy this man who he viewed as a brother, who he loved dearly. I don't think he could, like, physically do that. And, and the series kind of brings that to light, too, because, like, he just leaves. Yeah. He's like, yeah. you're fully evil now, and I accept that, but I also still cannot kill you. Like, I, I cannot do this. So he leaves. Yeah. Well, Dylan. I guess I'll finish out the second round with another Anakin bit. That Since we're talking about second round, thank you, Ben and Matt for like steering it this direction uh, is all about Anakin and Anakin's fate. And I think one of the big factors in Anakin's fate was being groomed by Darth Sidious. And so one of the key moments that we see of him being groomed in the movies is when Sidious reveals at the night of the opera, the tale of Darth Plagueis, which is definitely the, 
I want to say well, like my one of my favorite, if not my favorite moments in Star Wars as a moment. Um, oh my God. It's so like this is it's actually one of the few scenes in the prequels that's not a fight where I feel tension. Yeah. Like this is good movie making. This is good writing. This is very good directing. This is good acting. Like everyone's because it's letting the scene breathe. Right. It's letting it, it's letting you find, it's trusting you as a viewer to breathe in everything. Um, and then you can kind of see as this tale of Darth Plagueis and reviving the dead, right. Bringing the dead back to life is being told to Anakin. Um, you know, Sidious knows about Padme. He knows about Anakin's dreams. He might've even planted An- Anakin's dreams there. Right. Um, and, uh, so you, you see the gears start turning in Anakin's head like, Oh, I need to potentially preserve this man who's implying he might have knowledge of how to save Padme when she, when and if she dies from childbirth, right? And that that's a game changer. That's a game changer. Absolutely. The t- t- tale of Darth Plagueis, not only is it a tense scene, but just seeing the transformation in Anakin in that scene is huge. Well, yeah, you see, you can visibly see the wheels turning in his head of like, oh, there, there is, maybe there's a way. Yeah. To kind of, and then that's like, that's the tipping point of him starting to descend into this dark world because he's making a, it's a, it's the proverbial make the deal with the devil to save the ones that you love. Mm-hmm. So, and also just like Ian McDermott in that scene, like the whole, like, there was like a, there's a lot of things that, you know, I forgot the line. It's like uh, that some would deem to be unnatural. Oh. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, yep. So he's shady. He's shady. <laughs> he's as fuck. shady. Yes. It's when he's finally. I think for him, it's a bit of a risk because he's finally kind of revealing to yeah. Anakin who he is, right? Um, and it might not pay off, or no. it might pay off, right? Um, he's definitely gambling. For yeah. Sure. It's a huge gamble. So. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I wish more of the prequels were like that. Not again. I I appreciate the prequels, but there's not enough scenes, in my opinion, in them that are like that. That are not duels. Well, but in in a way though, it's like it it it's kind of nice that scene because you know what will happen because like obviously the the prequels come after the original trilogy, so it's like one of those things where you see the the train wreck. It's oh, like the car crash is going to happen. Yes. And you're like, you just can't look away. And it's just so the tension and like, kind of like the, I don't know, the, it kind of grips you a little bit. Yeah. Makes episode three, it elevates it into a really, really great film. Yeah. In my opinion. It's, it's the best prequel. Yeah. You said, wait, what's the best prequel? Episode three. <sighs> you're high. No. The first one's the best. I mean, from like a funny, lighthearted standpoint. No, it, it's the best. Like, it's the most important for the lore. Like, Qui-Gon Jinn is the most important character in all of Star Wars. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. <laughs> like, I know, I drafted is, him in Star Wars characters. Yeah, and yeah. he's the best one. He's the most important. He is the guy who can put a stop to Palpatine before Palpatine even really gets started. Like, the dark side needs Qui-Gon gone for everything to work out. Why is that? Because, like Matt said, he's on the fringes. And he's also more connected with the living force than the bureaucratic nonsense of the Jedi that doesn't really connect them more to the force, but just gives them power in the institution. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Like Qui-Gon wasn't about that shit. And you like what you're talking about with Darth, like the tale of Darth Plagueis. If Anakin was rolling with Qui-Gon, shit wouldn't happen. He wouldn't have even been there. He wouldn't have needed Palpatine. Like he leaned on Palpatine as that father figure that he Mm -hmm. never had. So Papa again, Papa Dean. Yeah, like Qui Gon was everything. My wife. I'm glad that. I mean, fuck your spoilers. I'm glad they brought him back for Obi Wan. That was dope. Right. Took you long yes. enough. Right on. That's a great first half. Those are great moments. Hey, you said a student was the one who suggested this. Yeah. Shout out to Ella, loyal listener for the re- recent like past. Appreciate the suggestion for an excellent topic. Hopefully this satisfies that Star Wars moment. We will come back again and do Star Wars TV slash animated series moments. But for the first go around, we got to do the movie. So appreciate the suggestion. Excellent topic. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the pod in the near future as well. Yeah, send us some emails too. You know, leave us some feedback on, on the Instagram and all that jazz. 
We appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Y'all, this is Mount Draftmore. It's halftime. So I have a kind of flip it on its head. We're talking about the best movie moments. Well, let's talk about what are the worst movie moments in Star Wars. I hate sand. (laughs) Uh, Dude, the whole love thing that happens in episode two. Oh, God. When they, yeah, everything that they're doing out there, like by in that little chateau by the water oh my God. and ro- frolicking in the field is like so cringy and it can to watch back huge rapey vibes oh he's got big time like stalker eyes like Anakin, it's you're making me uncomfortable don't do that Anakin continues to do that yeah well and i i <laughs> recently read something about like the breakdown of how old he is at different times that happened throughout star wars he's only 19 when that's going down so like yeah he doesn't know what the hell he's doing uh yeah he's yeah. just horny like straight up, very horny. Yeah, and big he doesn't time know horny. what to do with all that horniness. No, because Obi Wan probably never talked to him about it. No, no he's not like <laughs> Obi Wan did not have the conversation. So, when you see a lady that you like, you might feel a certain way. He doesn't have the dad to tell him about the birds and the bees. You might get a big old boner. <laughs> <laughs> Push those feelings deep, deep down. <laughs> so that one, the all that, yeah, the love story in Episode Two is bad it's really really bad what was the one you said um well like yeah when they're frolicking in the field but like if i'm thinking back amongst all the star wars movies like and i don't know i i I think some of the stuff like with you know like all the jar jar stuff is pretty pretty brutal yeah yeah it's pretty brutal how about the Yub Nub song? You know, if they redid the CGI it for Jar Jar, it yeah. would be better. Yeah. I just wish they... It's just more of, like, the like the comedy of the character. Like, it was definitely intended for kids, which the whole prequels were. That That's the whole point. But it just felt, like, a little too forced. Like, look at this silly character. Ha ha, he's so silly. Man, can you believe that they would make a character like this? He would be in Star Wars? Right. So... The key would be to make a character that both adults and children appreciate. Um, so that's awful. You said sand, right, Ben? I hate sand. sand. Gets everywhere. <laughs> Basically, all of episode two is pretty it's bad. It's bad. That's <laughs> the worst Star With Wars. a few moments sprinkled in that are pretty cool. I I put the Yub Nub song as a, as a moment, actually, that might be um, memorable in Star Wars, you know? The yap dab did dab deep dab 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 I don't I don't even know how it goes. Yeah, in dab in dab the Return of the Jedi. Yeah, it's yeah. so bad. Bam, 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 bam. It's so bad. And I'm, then when they added in the CGI in the special editions, it was just like, oh, back, God. back, back when. And the, she's like dancing around. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, and she doesn't look like an alien like other Star Wars aliens. She looks like a fucking cartoon. Yeah, the CGI is really bad. I hate you, George Lucas. I also really love you, but I, I kind of hate you, too. <laughs> Dude, some people think that that song is like a banger. Really? Yeah. Oh, my. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I'm not going to second guess myself. I'm going to hold true, hold fast. Also, another worst moment related to Return of the Jedi is when they just, like, the mo- unceremonious, like, getting rid of Boba Fett. Oh. Hold up, hold up. Yes. You said the Yub Nub song you don't like? Wait, isn't that the uh, the one at the beginning of Return of the Jedi? Did I get the name wrong? Yeah, the Yub Nub song is the song by the Ewoks. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, y'all. That's Wait. the one with, like, the percussion oh, and playing the, the drums. Playing the drums. My bad. Okay, that song's fine. Yeah, yeah that song's cute. No, yeah. I, I, I li- and I have nothing, I want to be clear. I but like, we know which one you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Just to be clear, I like Ewoks, okay? I'm not a person that has an issue with them. Yeah, we all know the, the song at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, in Jabba's Palace, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, the how lame-ass they got rid of Boba Fett in Return of the Jedi. I was like, come on, this guy's so cool. And then you're just going to, like, Han accidentally knocks his jetpack into gear. <sighs> it's ridiculous. And then the Sarlacc burps. 
Boop. Like, come on. Yeah. We're following the highs of Empire with this. I love Return of the Jedi, but that's ridiculous. Just, yeah. For the most part, Ugh. though, yeah, the, the original trilogy steered away from too many bad moments. It was pretty good for the most part. Yeah. Any other bad moments, or is that pretty good? Uh, basically, all the stuff on... Well, I, like, I guess we said the second movie's just garbage. Yep. Because everything on on Kamino is bullshit. Um, what's the big city that they're in? They're not in Coruscant at the beginning of the second one, are they? Uh, Yeah, they are. Like they are. The Hitman. Yeah. The Hitman. Yeah, yeah so they're in the underground. That one's yeah. dumb, too. Dumb movie. Yeah. It, uh, two's not the best. No. Although I watched it a million times. But oftentimes I'd just skip to the end with the clone troopers. Yeah. And the fight in the pit. And Natalie Portman. She's kind of with my heart. Midriff. She was kind of my heart throb at the time. But they kept her in pants. Respect. They did keep her in pants. Uh, although it seems like I don't know if she was wearing a bra under that shirt. Dude, she was wearing a shirt. She's wearing a shirt. It's like the 2000s, and she's in pants and a shirt. That's a progressive outfit for the time. I guess so. I don't know. I, I think, I feel like if Allison were here, she'd argue. <laughs> I've got a, I've got to channel Allison right now. Well, what are you going to argue? At the time, women were wearing less. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying relative to what was going on at the time, she's looking pretty good. Yeah. No, I mean, she's like not having support under your. Under your tatas is <laughs> inconvenient, but is it the worst thing out there? Oh, no. I mean, and, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's a sexy outfit. Like, you know, pubescent Dylan enjoyed it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, God. Yeah, I know. Uh, anyway, we don't have to dig too yeah. far. Uh, <laughs> and with that, we there were some transition. bad moments. Let's get back to the good moments. Yeah. yeah, let's go back to the good mo 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 moments. Dylan, would you give us a recap, please? Sure. I've got. I love you. Uh, or I love you. I know. And uh, tale of Darth Plagueis. Matt has Luke. I am your father. No. Uh, and duel between Obi Wan and Anakin on Mustafar. Ben has Death Star attack run from the first movie. And Duel of the Fates. Yeehaw. Round three. Round three, Dylan, your third pick. This is your most important pick. This is? Yeah. No pressure. Fuck. Because you'll have the last, like, at, at the end, you get the last pick. Like, you get whatever's left. Uh, this is the yeah. value right here. You pick the opera. I did pick the opera. For your second pick. And- I'm wondering, should I go for something operatic or something kind of horrific? Um... I don't have a duel. Um, none of us have talked about the sequel trilogy. That could be interesting. We've you been... actually know a lot about the sequel trilogy, too. I do? Yeah, because you've watched it probably more. I don't know how many times Matt's watched it. I know you've watched it more than me. I've okay. watched it a good amount. I would say I've got, I do have a couple of moments from the sequel trilogy. Although... I mean, let's be honest. Just be honest with me. Are you guys going to pick anything from the sequel trilogy? Mm. I might have a couple stuff on deck, but it's not a lot. No, I don't have a ton on there. I mean, I don't know if I was going to go for it or not. I could save it for the fourth round. Um, I think what I want to go for is I'm going to come back. No, you know what? Fuck it. I need a a lightsaber (laughs) battle. No, fuck it. I've got a lightsaber battle. Okay? And... This is my favorite lightsaber battle in the entire. Um, I, I I like it. It's my favorite, and it is between Ray and Kylo and the Red Guards in the throne room of uh, Snoke. I think that lightsaber battle is dope. It's so fun. Um, people say when you slow it down and analyze it, it doesn't make sense. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. Like it looks cool. You know, a lot of things don't make sense when you slow them down and analyze them in film. Right. Like, but it's a lightsaber. It's not even a real tool. Like, have you ever tried to slow down and analyze driving scenes? Oh, God. In, yeah. a, in an area that you know, <laughs> that's the worst. You'll be watching something that was filmed in Seattle. Uh-huh. And one second, the scene, they are driving and they are by the zoo. And then uh-huh. they turn a corner and now they are on Capitol Hill, <laughs> n- like nearing the point where you're going to turn down near the international district. Like, uh-huh. what the fuck? That literally is, imp- like, 
not going to happen. So yeah, I get what funny. you're saying, Dylan. Yeah. And uh, I think this is my personal favorite duel. I do respect. I, I love that duel between Obi-Wan and, and uh, Anakin in episode three. Um, is there another duel? I feel I, like I had the duel of fates. fates. I love the duel of fates. Yep. I'm not going to argue against those. Those are great. I think this is also a top tier duel. Okay. It's, it's a really tense moment because you don't really know. Maybe you have a feeling, but you don't know if you haven't seen the film, which direction Kylo's going to go. Right. He took Ray to Snoke. There's tension already. Both Ray and Kylo think that like the other one's going to join their side to take down Snoke. But it looks like Snoke has the upper hand, honestly, right? He's very powerful, although his pride gets in the way because he doesn't think that Kylo can twist the lightsaber and cut his ass in half, which when that happened, my jaw dropped. And then, and then, uh, as I think Kylo calls the lightsaber and Ray just, you just see your hand reach up and catch it. Ooh, oh my God, shivers, shivers. It's a, it's a moment <laughs> of beauty and power where for a brief second, these two figures who have been opposed to each other in the light and the dark, they team up to like survive um, in the throne room. And you think like, okay, what's going to happen next? Are they going to team up? And then at the end of the battle, like Kylo has the lightsaber and they're both holding on to it and he's not letting go. Right. He's not going to let go. No, he's not. He wants Ray to join him. So I think there's a lot built upon this this duel, right? When you first go into the film and you're like, God, I just don't know what's going to happen. There, there's a lot of potential there, um, a lot of unknowns, and and then it's just cool watching them destroy the Red Guard troops. Um, and Ray, when she's fighting, she's one of my favorite fighters because she's not just passive, like holding her breath the whole time. She's fucking screaming like a warrior. The whole time oh, she's yeah. fighting. And Kylo, the way he wields his lightsaber, it's like he's wielding a fucking claymore. Oh, it looks like a million pounds. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Like they I, I can tell a lot of work and effort went into crafting their styles on how they fight, right? Um, because they don't have perfectly choreographed forms. Yeah. It looks realistic. It does. Okay, that's my diatribe. That's a good that's a good pick, dude. See, that's one of the few, I think, that are worthy of picking from the new trilogy. It's a great fight. Yeah. It's great awesome. Fight. All right. Background to me. Third um, pick, dude. I'm going to go with one that is, like, pretty scary, but it's, like, epic in its own way, which is that hallway scene in, with Vader and Rogue One. Oh, Damn it. Man. it is, I wanted that next. It is so good because it's like, yes, this is who he should be. He should be an evil dude who's just straight up mowing through your average rebel soldiers that stand no chance because he's an evil Sith Lord. Like, this is, I remember just the glow, he ignites the red lightsaber, and then that's the only light in this hallway. You got the sirens going off, and they, you could, like, visibly feel, like, and witness the, the absolute terror on those rebel soldiers aboard the ship like as soon as he comes in and they're just screaming like i'm going to die like i'm going to die they're trying to get these plans out he's just like he's mowing through him with the lightsaber he's pushing guys up to the ceiling and you know like vader he's able to like force choke and you but you never see him like fully close his fist he does that to a dude like he straight up just like collapses a dude's windpipe yeah he just goes like oh and here done it does it with the full fist not just his fingers no he just goes and they're done he's just, he grabs all the, you know force grabs all their weapons Blaster bolts have no effect. And it's like, yes, this is Darth Vader when he should be super powerful, super evil. Like, this guy's just straight up murdering people. Yeah. And it is, it's a terrifying, like, a, like suspenseful scene when it happens. And you can just only imagine, like, God damn, <laughs> that would be a bad situation to be in. You don't want to be in a hallway with that guy. No. So that's a pretty badass scene. But it also, like, in a way, it's kind of funny because, like, that's supposed to take place literally right before A New Hope starts. Uh huh. So, like, him staring off, that's the same ship that he's going to capture again and capture Princess Leia. But that means that, like, that only happens, what, maybe a, a week? It's that, bullshit. It creates, 
it's a great scene, but it creates continuity issues. Because the Doesn't duel it? with Obi-Wan, yeah, has to be like a week after that. Yeah, it's if no that. time. And it yeah. goes from being like this savage. Yeah. He is, like like you're saying, that's what Darth Vader should be like. And then a week later, he is just a bitch. He just looks <laughs> He's like cardboard, a, yeah. He is nothing. He's has he looks stiff as a board. He looks like a board with little limbs that is just swiveling. There's no kind of fluidity um, and they're to just how like, he moves. It's, I mean, they did him a service with that scene, but they needed to think that one through. They, uh, it's continuity wise, it doesn't make sense. It ruin it. It just it's well, rough. and this is where the things like George Lucas has tweaked a lot of things with special editions. I would be okay if they went back and CGI reshot that scene. If they Between like Obi Wan and Darth. yeah, if they actually made it a fight, that would be oh. kind of cool. I mean, oh, what you're gonna come on me for? Like you want what the was, whole no, series no, no. Remade. What was what was the prep like? Sh- it's gonna come up in a different thing that we're gonna release in the future, so I don't want to like talk about it. But it's you and McGregor is a better Obi Wan than the original Alec- guy. Alec Guinness. So that's why if you were going to do anything, you have to remake the old ones so that you can bring you and McGregor's Obi Wan into them, even though he's only in the first one. But then you get to keep Anakin as Darth Vader. And like I was telling Dylan, if they remade it, do it like they've made Romeo and Juliet. Keep the original script. Yeah. You are not allowed to change the script at all. You can change the angles that it's filmed at. You can put your own kind of like artistic spin on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, shit, how many different versions of Hamlet and Macbeth and and, and Macbeth? Well, I'm in like video or in like, uh, like cinema form, like Romeo and Juliet. There are so many different versions. Same exact script, but change it up a little bit. Like, imagine if someone made a ja- like an authentic Japanese version of Star Wars. Same exact script, That'd be but dope. it's like samurai style. Mm-hmm. Shit would be gangster. It would be. Yeah, I'd, I just want that stupid Death Star con- confrontation to be changed. It's be so better. bad. I, it could be better. I can forgive it just because they didn't know exactly what the fuck they were doing at that time. You know, I'd... Maybe, like, George Lucas had an idea, but I don't know, like, you know, maybe he didn't think, like, they needed choreographers. I don't really know why it was bad. Well, you know that, but see, he put choreographers in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Right. Those fights are way better. Like, when you watch that first trilogy, the first one is like, eh, this is a 5 out of 10. Then the next two are like, ooh, these are, like, solid 8 or 9s. They're not great. But then the prequels come out, and the one, like, the most redeeming part of the prequels is the lightsaber fights. They're so good. They're all awesome. Yeah. All of them are amazing. Except they jump around a little bit too much. I, the only ones that I don't care for are the ones with the Emperor. Because he has such a like he doesn't have any stabby fluidity. Motion, yeah. Yeah, he's very stabby, very stiff, mm-hmm. very hunched over. He they make him look like a troll almost. Yeah. yeah. I don't care so much for that. But all the other fights are just amazing. So then you see Anakin fight Obi Wan in episode three. Amazing. Right, Mm -hmm. we can say in Obi Wan Kenobi, like in the series, the fighting is still Mm -hmm. top notch. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that rematch, great, very very good. Rogue One, you see Darth Vader still has it. Yep, Yep. still baller. And then a week later, he is just like he loses it in a week. Yeah, but then he regains it. Maybe a couple years later. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I, again, I'm just gonna excuse it because of that first movie. Like they're they're breaking a lot of ground in that first movie, inventing a lot of different technology. They've got a, their hands in a lot of different pots, like that, the trench run scene. I yeah. mean, they had to invent technologies to do that. You know, that's why it's the best one. It's so good. It's so good. So I'm gonna forgive it a little bit, but I see what you're saying, and I won't be mad if they at least redo that scene. I don't know. If they could make it work, I, they probably could. I don't know. There's all sorts of deep fakes nowadays. I've seen stuff on YouTube where people are have recreated that scene like really, really well. So there's there's ways in which you could do it without like taking away from what the original movie's supposed to be. So, but yeah, that Rogue One scene, baller. Hell yeah, it is a good scene. <clears throat> Ooh, I got the wrap around. I get to do my last two picks. Uh, and y'all left some stuff on the board that I think are so iconic, you're going to regret leaving them. Oh, no. One of them I'm going to leave for the fourth just so I can really, really soak in the value oh, of it. Oh, my God. The but, hubris. But you mentioned it in the in the uh, halftime, but I'm picking it as a moment because, dude, the Yub Nub song, it goes hard. 
All right, you just lost my respect. It goes hard. <laughs> but hold on, I have to. I have to hold on. Hold on, I have to make sure that I that I'm actually trying to take the one that I want because I don't want like they play music twice, right? You want it at the very yeah. end. Yeah, I want, want the, the end, end one because the end one is actually dope. That where is, they're playing that stormtrooper helmet. That's the one yeah. I want. That's the one I want where you see the Jedi dun, ghost. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that it? was some like holiday special shit. Woo-hoo! Oh, this is the despecialized version. So this is the original. No, you need. The I don't want edition. the. I want that special edition. You want the Ewok celebration? Yes. Right? The do 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 Ewok celebration. There we go. This God, oh, dude, it's so good. This shit inspires so much hope. You're like, oh yes, they did it. The galaxy is going in the right direction. I don't want to play anymore because I don't want to get claimed. It makes you just feel good. And then you see the Force Ghost, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it ends on that big crescendo. Yeah. Oh. And they do all like the montage around the galaxy. Everybody's just going ape shit. Like, yeah. I love that. But I also, I think the montage is a little cheesy because it's like, okay. No, montages are great. No, montages are great. That montage, it's like, okay, are people really celebrating? We're not done yet, folks. We still got to beat the Empire. Like, how did this news travel so fucking fast? Um, the Battle have, of Jakku hadn't even happened yet. Yeah, <laughs> and and also, I mean, on Coruscant, you think all those people are going out like in the Imperial core right then and there to celebrate? Okay, so I'm going to push back a little bit because right. you're like, how did the news travel that fast? These these folks have technology that is far more advanced than what we have. You'd mm-hmm. agree? Sometimes, yes. Okay. So, sometimes it looks like they're using analog tape decks. <laughs> product of the time yeah, yeah. but considering that effects they're moving at the speed of light so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt okay right yeah we don't have that capacity here yep. if kim kardashian were to die in a car accident yeah right now yeah it would be reported within 10 minutes it would be on the internet be huge news and everyone would have it yeah that's a good point that's everyone would have point. it so if the emperor is known to be on the new death star and the new Death Star blows up. Mm-hmm. And you know it's no different than like Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein gets overthrown. Yeah, he still has an administration in place. He still has a lot of supporters within the country. Mm-hmm. But he's dead. Yeah. The rebels are just stoked on that. And we know that there are rebel forces all throughout the galaxy. And one of the biggest celebration scene is in court. It shows, it shows us places that we know are pro-rebellion. Right, Coruscant is home to the Galactic Senate. Mm-hmm. So they're stoked because it means maybe the Republic's going to come back. Mm-hmm. Um, it shows, where's the place where Amidala is from? Naboo. It shows Naboo. We know that that is a place that wants the Senate. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think it's a great scene. And it really, I to me, it inspires hope. I That's like it. Very good. Because it was supposed to be the natural conclusion to a trilogy. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they stomped all over that when the <laughs> when the uh Star Killer base blew everything up. Oh, when they basically right. just made the Death Star into a planet. Yeah. Hey, make it bigger and better. Yeah. Got it. Third time's a charm. Yeah. Oh, so we gotta blow up this big planetary weapon. Okay. Where have I heard that before? Yeah. This is coming from a guy who actually loves that movie, but it's just so it, I mean it's fucking, the best of the sequels. It's Force silly. Awakens, yeah. It's darn silly. Oh, it's cause it yeah, it, they really leaned into like making it for kids. Yeah. So it's silly. Yeah. I, I don't think it's better in episode one. Episode one, you get midichlorians. <laughs> <laughs> episode one, you get some baller music. The, that's for sure. Baller this... music, baller fights, baller pod racing. We still haven't gotten pod racing. And pod racing is a great game. Oh, you about to pick pod racing? Great game. No, I'm not. I'm about to pick a uh, time because we need to do one more ad for the midibetus meter. Oh. Midibetus meter. This is Mount Draftmore. Mount Draftmore. If you're over 45, have metabetes, and are on galactic Medicare, you may qualify for a free meter from Living Force Medical. If you have type 2 metabetes like I have, you're confronted with choices. You can choose to feel sorry for yourself. I hope you don't. 
I hope you choose to get involved with a good Jedi. Find out some things about Mitabetus and your body in the bargain. You learn to check your midichlorians and often. That, along with a simple diet and exercise program, can help keep your Mitabetus under control. If you're on Galactic Medicare, call Living Force Medical. We'll help you keep your Mitabetus under control. First, we'll give you a free meter. Nobody is more serious than Living Force Medical about keeping your Mitabetus under control. That's why we're a proud sponsor of the Galactic Mitabetus Association and their mission to prevent and cure Mitabetus. Call for your free meter and LFM offer. That is 1-800-232-8648. Again, that is 1-800-232-8648. Mount Draftmore. All right, round four. I have the wraparound, and I think I have probably the most iconic scene that's still, like, Luke, I am your father, very iconic. I think this is more iconic. I'm surprised it made it all the way to the fourth round because I think anyone, even if someone hadn't seen Star Wars, they would know this. They'd be like, oh, that's Star Wars. I'm talking about the opening crawl. Mm. Yeah. The opening crawl is exclusively Star Wars. It's dark. You get the LucasArts title. And then you get hit. Bum, ba-da-dun, and then it just gives you the context. It gives you the context. It doesn't waste time in the movie giving you all of that because that's going to take time and money. No, we have to set you up. We want to put you in the action. We want to put you in the thick of it. Here's what's happening. That opening crawl, we don't see that in any other form of cinema. Nope. It's uniquely Star Wars. And that score that goes with it is powerful. It sucks you in. When you're a kid, like imagine the first Star Wars movie you went to. My first Star Wars experience in theater was episode one. And they hit you with that opening crawl. Boom! It brings you in. You're like, oh, shit. I'm like, in this. This is great. It is great. Think of how important the opening crawl is to the most recent Star Wars, like episode nine. Without that opening crawl, how much much legwork are they going to have to do to set that up? Ton. Whereas three paragraphs, boom, context. And you're, you're left with a lot of questions, but it is used as a device to move you through the story in ways that they don't have to draw their attention and money in production because it wouldn't be compelling enough. Yeah. That opening crawl is iconic. Oh, absolutely. That's Star Wars in a nutshell. I cannot yeah. push back on anything, joking or otherwise. Good value. <laughs> That's Dude. a value pick. Super value. I almost picked that earlier, but I didn't. But I didn't. But you didn't. So that'll be my final pick, the opening crawl. Nice. And so last pick, you know, there's a few different ways I, I kind of want to go with this. I'm really not sure which one I want to do, but I think I'm going to go with uh, when Yoda lifts the X-Wing out of the swamp in Dagobah. Like, I just think that that scene really highlights, like, like Luke is, at that point, he's really immature, and he's, like, acting straight. He's making emotional decisions. Like, he is fundamentally steering away from what he needs to do because of he just feels like I have to go off. I have to save my parents. I have my, these feelings. And he's like, what are you? I don't even know what you're even talking about. Like, I was expecting to go see this Grandmaster Yoda. You're just a crazy old hermit living in a swamp on a desolate planet. <laughs> like, I, I got to go do what I got to do. And Yoda's like, no, you're just, you're not, you're not getting it, kid. Like, you're not prepared. You're going to suffer more than you know if you go off and do this. And Luke's like, well, whatever. Like, I still got to go. So then, that, like, that final act of kind of, like, defiance to Luke of being like, no, you don't, you need to listen to what I have to say. Like, I'm 900 years old. I trained generations of Jedi. And that whole, just, like, the symbolism of, like, I can just lift your ship out of the, of the swamp. You couldn't, you could barely lift a rock a day ago. I can do this. Like, I know what the hell I'm talking about. And that and then after that like when he leaves you have that little scene between force ghost obi-wan and yoda saying like well there goes our last hope and then that little easter egg he drops a little like no there is another like 
I don't know. This it's like a it's like a critical scene to really set up a the significance of Yoda, b show you that Luke has, still has a ways to go, and then also offer up a little bit of like confusion of wondering well what what's going to happen next. So I don't know. I really like that scene. I think that whole interaction between Luke and Yoda on Dagobah is like just it's perfect. It it, it really highlights who Luke Skywalker is at that moment in time. I love that scene. Yeah. <clears throat> Every time I'm like God, Luke. You- you idiot. <laughs> you fucking dumbass. Still have so much to learn. And then by the, you know, by the end of um, Last Jedi, it's like, you're still at the same place, my man. Yeah, no, he comes back. He's like, God, you really haven't learned anything, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm going to pick a value pick. I think this person has slept on. And this this is a, a rousing little... It's not big enough to be called a speech, perhaps, but definitely a pep talk, right? She gives in Rogue One, Jin Erso, right? The hesitant rebel le- person who becomes a, a rebel leader, right? Roused from the depths of a prison sentence from uh, presumably getting up to no good in, in um, the camp of, um, what's his name? What's a... Uh, Oh, man. I forget that guy's name. Uh, the guy who raised her. Saw. Saw Guerrera. Yeah. Um, so she was in an Imperial camp. She was busted out. Didn't want to take part in the rebellion. But then her father's brought up. She's like, okay, got to see what's up with that. And then she, she gets buy-in, right? And so they're heading to this Imperial base. And people are understandably hesitant and she goes, look, the Empire's building a terrible weapon. They know about the Death Star at this point. I need your help. We can stop them. This is your chance to make a real difference. We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Are you with me? Right? And because of that, she rouses a, a group of rebels to go on a suicide mission, to be honest. Although you kind of hope going in that it's not a suicide mission. Right? Right? But it ends up being a suicide mission um, to get the plans to the Death Star. Yeah, it, 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 it that whole actually like the conclusion of Rogue One is like it, it, it's beautiful because it like, yeah, it really sets up the gravity of like, wow, these are important plans, and you understand why the Empire is looking high and low to find these things, and like sets up the significance of what the Rebels will do in Episode Four, and it's yeah. Rogue oh, One is just a phenomenal movie. Oh, yeah. And and then it barely, their plan barely even works. Yeah. And a lot, like, everyone dies. Yeah, everybody, literally everybody dies. Barely fucking works. Everyone dies. And that's, and then it sets up perfectly because then you understand why the rebels are limping away at, in four. Yeah. So, I love that speech. Speech I, is really good. And it shows the growth of her character. She's, like, very much, I need to look out for me and me alone because nobody else will. And then by then she's like, no, this is about the collective Mm -hmm. purpose, the collective mission. So really cool. Believes in a bigger purpose. Yeah. And look at that star Wars. You made an original character that had a lot of depth to it. You can do it. Oh yeah. You can do it. I liked every character in that movie. Every character was interesting and they didn't have a whole story behind them. Right. K2SO. Awesome. Hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Great draft. Great suggestion. Ella? Yeah. Shout out to Ella. Great job, Ella. Y'all, we've done our draft. We've selected our teams. Now it's time to make our case. Make, 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 make their case. Be logical. And clear. It's got to be logical and clear. I have the first making of cases to be done. So let's get this jam started. Y'all, I have the Death Star attack run from the original, the Duel of Fates from Episode 1, the Ewok celebration song from Return of the Jedi, or the sixth or third of the original, whatever you want to call it. And then I have the opening crawl. Let's start with the opening crawl. Iconic to Star Wars, exclusive to Star Wars. It does what movies sometimes fail to do, and maybe things like Marvel could learn from. You know, set your context up through a couple paragraphs right in the beginning and use a great score to bring you in. Everyone knows it. If you're not a Star Wars person and you saw the opening scroll, you would know that's Star Wars. Iconic. 
The Ewok Celebration Song. It gives you hope after a long journey, a journey where you encounter darkness and light trying to fight that darkness back. In your left at the end of Return of the Jedi with hope. There is hope in the galaxy. The whole point of the first movie was to inspire hope. And by the end of the third, you are left with it. The darkest of the dark side is extinguished. Next, we've got, well, I've got the Duel of Fates, but I think that's most important. So the Death Star run, Dylan said you, they had to develop new technology just to film it. I mean, that's impressive in itself. And then back to the Duel of Fates, the most important event in all of Star Wars. There's no tale of Anakin Skywalker if his should-be father figure doesn't die in Qui-Gon Jinn. So that's the team. That's the best team. I'd vote for me, and you should too. Noise. Yeah, I got that one in. Did it well. Did it well. Uh, yo, Matt, I just want to give you this, because I want to play it when you said it, but... I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Mac, it's why you fail. Oh! That just is why you fail. So good. A lot of tension. Yeah. My mom used to call Yoda the little green man. <laughs> He was a wise little green man. He was a wise little green man. And with that, are you ready to make a case? Let's do it. All right. So to recap here, I've got Luke, I am your father. That famous interaction, that duel between Luke and Vader on Cloud City and Empire Strikes Back. I got the duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin in Episode 3 on Mustafar. Uh, I also have the Rogue One hallway scene with Darth Vader carving dudes up. And then finally I got that interaction between Luke and Yoda Towards the end of Empire Strikes Back, where Yoda lifts his X-Wing out of the swamp in Dagobah, it's that whole, like, I don't believe it. That's why you'll fail, that whole thing. So to start off, Luke, I am your father. I mean, this is the most iconic line in all of Star Wars. Like, it will be the line that gets remembered forever and ever and ever and ever. You all know when you're little kids and you have a little oscillating fan, you can say, Luke, I am your father. Like, it's just such an emotionally charged scene that they did a great job of hiding the reveal up until the very moment that's actually being shot. Uh, it's iconic. It had to be taken, especially in the first round. Next up, Mustafar du- duel between Anakin and Obi Wan. This sets up Anakin to become Vader. Like he is already going down the dark side towards like really the halfway point through the rest of the movie in Episode Three. But he's he's not in the suit yet. And you need to figure out well how does the guy go from this to that? How does he become more machine than man? This explains that. It's the best lightsaber duel in all of Star Wars, in my opinion. It is the most mo- emotionally charged one. It is fantastic. The scene, the imagery, everything. Uh, the Rogue One hallway scene. This thing's straight up scary. This is what you'd want Darth Vader to be. It's the height of his powers, carving dudes up. Oh, my God. Luke, uh, I'd vote for me. You should, too. <laughs> See, I feel like at that point, and this is just perspective as we continue to run the line, if you hear it beeping and you're trying to make your case, maybe just forget that line. Yeah. You know? Just I know. I, I didn't thought. get to talk about my last pick. Too, I knew, too damn bad. Sad. You started to sad. you started to say Luke, and then yeah. like panicked. Oh no! Yeah, it's a, tragic. You all know. Dylan has set though. the Dylan has set the precedent with that line. It did, and we've been trying to to rise to it. But you know what? No longer. <laughs> I declare from here on out, we will not be captive to, to the, the people's line. champion. Yeah, like okay. I'd vote for me. You should too. Well, if you'd vote for yourself, then you'd cheat in an election, good sir. Y'all can't get it like I could. That's all. No, I've oh! got. If we were to do stats of who's gotten it the cleanest, I think I beat you. Maybe. Maybe. Someone Are you go ready back to make and your check case? that. Yeah. yeah. Somebody listen to all the episodes and double check that. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, give us the feedback that you've yet to start giving us. Give us feedback. All right, Dylan, you ready? Yes. Okay, first of all, I know. I love you. I know. Uh, man, dude, this I think captures why. I love Star Wars and why so many people do. Han Solo, imperfect, flawed, kind of terrible person. But we love him. We love him. And so does Leia. And, and that captures Star Wars. We love Luke, too. You know what? Luke's a whiny fucking bitch. But I love Luke. He's great. Um, and these types of imperfections make Star Wars memorable, in my opinion. Um, also, that scene was ad-libbed. Tale of Dark Pla- Darth Plagueis. Man, talk about Anakin's downfall. This is where you can actually see the gears in his head start to turn as the grooming done by Palpatine has come full circle into fruition, right? And now Palpatine's like, ooh, I got this fucking kid in my in the palm of my hand, right? Um, uh, so, And then uh, lightsabers. Rey and Kylo versus the Red Guards in Snoke's throne room. Oh, my God. Just leading up to that scene, you don't even know what the fuck is going to happen. 
And then Snoke dies. And then they fight off the Red Guards together. Oh my God. And then what? They, they, they're enemies again? Dude. And the whole lightsaber scene is awesome too? Wow. Jen Erso's speech about hope. Man, all of Star Wars is about hope. Whether it's bringing balance to the Force or saving the gal- galaxy through the rebellion. Anyway, uh, I'd vote for me. You should too. Ah, ah, I got it. No, I got didn't. it. I got it. You don't watch you basketball. When it's second over, oh, yeah. Red, you're, no, you're over. It's got to no. be in the air before. It, you it, were like, I'd vote for me. You should. And that's it. The it was in too. the air. Nah, it wasn't. It was in you're the air. You're tripping. Y'all, you don't have to vote for him, but that's okay. Oh, that's my okay. God. It's all good. It's all good. All right. That's a wrap. Another draft in the books. That's right. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget, you can let us know who you thought won by submitting your vote to Instagram. Just search and follow Mount Draft More. Yeah, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, maybe some original music you like played during and after the show, you can always send us emails to mountdraftmore at gmail.com. That's M-T-M-T, draftmore at gmail.com. As always, thank you for listening. It blows us away that you take the time out of your day to listen. We genuinely appreciate it. Thank you. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. Preferably five stars. And subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Yeah, we're talking Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Pandora, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, even Alexa. That's a lot. That's right. We've got you covered. That'll do it for us here on Mount Draftmore. We'll see you back here next week. But until then, of course, be safe. Peace. Peace.